I love that voice. Um, <laughs> all right. So good morning. You're listening to WXOX 97.1 FM in Louisville, Kentucky, or you're listening on, at artxfm.com, streaming on your device. However you get here, thank you for joining us. This is LVA's Artabel on the radio, the show produced by Louisville Visual Art. I'm your host, Keith Waits, and we've got two photographers today we're going to talk to. Uh, this is the time in Louisville of the Photo Biennial. Every two years, uh, uh, a, an initiative uh, spearheaded by Paul Paletti of Paul Paletti Gallery and uh, the foremost collector in the state of, of photography, uh, uh, the state of Kentucky. Uh, all galleries in the city and a very large part of the surrounding area showing photography, a lot of workshops, uh, all sorts of different things. Uh, keynote address tomorrow night by Keith Carter, who was on a couple weeks ago. We did an interview with him. But today we're here to talk with Andrew Sensi, a photographer, uh, artist based in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Andrew uses photography to focus on the beauty of the everyday through portraits, contemporary landscapes, and candid images, a self-taught photographer working with traditional practices in order to create bodies of work with poetic sensibility. His photos highlight the beauty, joy, loneliness, and longing of the realities of everyday life. His exhibit, A Walk in the Park, uh, will be available for viewing September 30th through November 7th at Louisville Visual Art in our gallery uh, with an artist talk on Saturday, October 9th. And uh, Scotty Perry uh, is also a local based photographer and educator and artist. And um, all the, you know, all, I love all, the, all these artists that come on the show always do multiple things, always multi hyphenates. Um, he is a recipient of an artist professional development grant from the Great Meadows Foundation. And he has published uh, a book called Here. And the exhibit uh, that he has in relationship to the photo biennial is called Here. It's related to the book, uh, we presume. And it runs at 1512, uh, which is the uh, creative portal uh, here on uh, Lytle Street, right across from Louisville Visual Art. So um, at 1512 uh, Portland Avenue. Uh, so that show is on view through September 28th. So guys, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Scotty, let's start with you for a second. You 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 have just a few days left, about a week, week and about a half. A week, yeah. So, yeah, about a week and a half or whatever of your show being up, uh, and it's and it's related to this book, which I believe it was uh, self published. Yes, yes, yeah. self published. So, what is here? Talk about talk about that project, those images, and what people would expect to find when they come to visit the show at fifteen twelve. Yeah, so here is uh, the show and the book are based on a uh, photo that I took of my grandparents. Uh, I moved, with them for, moved in with them for about six months to take care of them. Uh, my papa had dementia, so the book's largely about dementia and loss. Um, it's kind of, it starts at the beginning, so kind of day one when I moved in and it goes through, uh, you know, the, the, the final loss of my, my grandparents. Uh, definitely, it's, it's heavy imagery, but I, I think that it, it's moving and it's very relatable in ways that people, um, that I didn't expect in, to invoke as many emotions and feelings to people as, as it has. Well, I think relatable is the key word there. I mean, I think we all, uh, particularly once you get to a certain age, uh, we all start experiencing loss in our family. And I think it's, it's, it's actually one of the more important things about family is how you deal with all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, how, when, when did you first conceive of, of what, how long ago was that? You said it was related to the loss of a... Yeah, so uh, I moved in around, it was sometime in November of 2018. Um, and I was, with, I was with them until full time until um, February or March of 2019. Um, and then my uncle kind of took, took the reins from there until um, Papa passed away in June. June or July, I forget now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was about six solid months of me documenting uh, every day um, kind of, as a way to kind of pre-grieve, you know, what, what, what was what was going to happen, like the inevitable. Sure. Well, there's all sorts of ways to to deal with grief. And one of them is to approach it as even before it really even before mm -hmm. the loss uh, through through various means, I would imagine being a caretaker or what have you. Um, is, do you think like is this. Is this project uh, uh, done and contained, or do you see this as something that might have new chapters moving forward? Uh, I, I hope it's contained. I hope it's I hope it's finished. Um, I still have grandparents alive, but I, I don't I don't want to add anything to this project or you know to, to this body of work. Um, with it being self published, I was you know that was going to be like the nail in the coffin. I'm done with it, um, and then the opportunity to have a, a gallery came along. Um, and I mean, obviously, my, my end goal would be love, I love to have, have the project picked up. 
uh, you know, by, by a publisher and, and not just do a self-published book. Um, that's kind of like, you know, my end goal, I'm working toward that, making some contacts. Uh, but as of right now, there's, there's no other, you know, there's no other photos that should go with, with, with the book or with the project. Okay. Uh, Andrew, uh, let's, let's take a minute with you. Uh, a walk in the park, or actually, I think you, I think you got walk in the park on your website. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a series of images uh, that you took over time in the Shelby Park neighborhood of Louisville. Talk a little bit about how that, how you came to be doing that and, and what you, what you found happened in doing those images. Yeah. Um, the, the project started um, in about 2014, 2015, when I first became interested in photography. Um, and I really wanted to know and understand like film photography and how photography started and especially in particular black and white and um, just picked up a camera off eBay and bought some black and white film. And we have a great film lab here in town called State Film Lab. Um, so I just dropped all my film off to them and had them develop it and send me scans. And um, that's kind of, but I basically, I took it on trips with me and stuff like that. But when I wasn't traveling or I wasn't at work, like I just would walk around the neighborhood with the camera. <clears throat> And then as I got more into photography, uh, it just kind of like became evident that this is actually like a project, like these photos actually can mean something and can go together and um, can tell a story and can kind of make a portrait of a neighborhood. So I started doing it with more um, effort and more intentionality um, and, and more skill too, as I kind of grew as a photographer, like it's really also not just a portrait of a neighborhood, but it's also a portrait of my growth in uh, making images. So um, yeah, it's been going on for, I guess, a, what would that be six, seven years at this point? Okay. So um, yeah, it's st I still make photos in the neighborhood. There's more images. This is just kind of the first uh, iteration of it. So I'm excited to, to share, share them. I really haven't shared them a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for people to see more of it. Well, it's interesting to think of this series as something that sort of charts your growth and development as a photographer, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that when you started, you didn't, you know, I, I, I've been working with you. I've seen the images, but, you know, it, and I don't, I don't see any appreciable lack of skill there. But to, Matt, to, to think in your mind, you're probably looking at like an early image where you think, I don't really, didn't really know what I was doing. Maybe yeah. I was just starting to point the camera around and do things. But. Yeah, and trusting trusting myself and trusting my eye and the things that I'm interested in. And there's definitely like periods through the work where it's like I'm a lot, there's like gaps in it where I'm just shooting like medium format and going out and making portraits of people and just doing that. And there's like obviously with the the pandemic and things like that, there's like images that are like more solitary and just kind of empty streets and different things like that that are um, less of that type of work. So yeah, it's um it's it's I mean it's life like that's that's what it is that's the kind of work that I like to make like I know Scotty and I both are big fans of street photography and but like I'm I don't know if I really consider myself a street photographer or if like real true street photography is a super big practice in Louisville but um like I like being out in the world with a camera so that's like kind of the the approach that I take so well, you know, when you say the word street photography too, I think it's one of those things that it sounds like it defines a certain kind of uh, subgenre or approach to photography. Mm -hmm. But I can imagine that just the approach to street photography could vary so dramatically from one photographer to another. Yeah, photographer, mm -hmm. location, like all of it, like various, yeah. like, yeah. Well, what wasn't the best city to be a, a street photographer? Definitely, yeah. there's definitely no grounds here for a full time one. Yeah. <laughs> do you, well, do you uh, do you encounter hostility as a street photographer? I mean, I'm I'm sure. You yeah, I mean, yeah, things. I think that's a, that's probably in most cities. I think in Louisville, though, it's you know people see a camera, they they don't ignore it. Uh, it's because it's so you know so rarely seen that you know somebody with a camera is taking pictures of people walking across the street or you know going about their daily business. Um, we would go, we would take trips on lunch uh, once or twice a month and. Um, you know, it, it would also be other people's lunchtime. So it's, it's you know, the busiest time downtown usually uh, where people were out, out and about. And there wasn't a whole lot of hostility. I would usually approach it, you know, eventually I, I wanted to learn more about the people 
Okay. Um, so I would ask them questions. I would talk to them. I would ask to take their portrait rather than to be like this, always these candid moments, which are great too. Um, but I think you, your rate for success is higher if you're, you know, if you actually connect with somebody and you can, you know, portray that through an image. So for yeah. street photography, that, that, that's kind of what it became for me was it was, was more that connection than, you know, the, these candid moments. Andrew, does that resonate with you the same way or? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think so. I think it's, it's, it's just a different pace. Like it's not, like I think when a lot of people think about street photography, obviously New York City, like is what a lot of people think about and the Joel Meyerowitzes and the, mm -hmm. gosh, Gary Winogrands and Andre, Andre Wagner's Wagner and the, like all those, those people. And it's like, that is to me personally, like that is like quintessential, like the essence of street photography, like that attitude that, uh, I don't know, like just that general, like, approach to things like being out with a camera on the street taking pictures of everyday life like that is it to me um and i personally really like the more candid approach to things i i do take a lot of portraits of people um but i think a lot of that is just louisville like walking around the neighborhood i can't just snap candid pictures of people very easily because they might be the only person i see walking for three blocks like there's no way they're not going to see me coming with the mm -hmm. camera in my hand and pointing it directly at them like it's just not going to happen um it's the same thing it's similar downtown that's why lunchtime kind of was kind of nice because you could get some of those candy because it's a little bit busier um but uh, yeah i think uh it's just i mean depends upon where you live like different cities mm -hmm. have different have different uh flavors i guess andrew have you spent much time in other neighborhoods or have you have, has it mostly been just exploring shelby park so far just really Shelby Park. I've, I mean, I've never really like with a concentrated effort, like gone around and shot in other neighborhoods other than like maybe an assignment. Um, I was on assignment the last uh, non-COVID derby. Um, I photographed in the surrounding neighborhoods, the people who live there and things like that. So that was the last like concentrated effort of like spending four or five hours somewhere and just making pictures. But um that wasn't like a long-term project. That was just a, a little magazine assignment. So, yeah. It's interesting that you use that phrase non-COVID derby because I, yeah. I was talking about, I was thinking about you talking about your neighborhood and I thought about what, what, what changed about doing it once the pandemic had happened. And mm -hmm. so when will we have like a non-COVID derby because we're not going to have a non-COVID derby probably next year. You know what I mean? We're not yeah. going to be far enough from it. Who knows when, yeah. So, yeah. so for street photography, then this has pro probably been a tough period. Is that, is that true, Scotty? Like, you know, just cause. Oh yeah. So everybody was locked away. And even now, I mean, is it as interesting to take pictures of people with masks? No, I mean, no, it's not. Well, I think that there probably, probably was a period where, where it would have been maybe the, you know, early on with the, with the, with the lockdown. Uh, I work downtown. And so when we, when we got sent home, everybody got sent home like there was it was a ghost town downtown I, I would i would go down about once a month for for office stuff and there was nobody down there so i mean the opportunities were 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 uh were nil right yeah um and e even now when, when i'm in the office now which is still rare it, there's people downtown but it's not it's not nearly as interesting there's not enough people nobody interacts really with each other you know because, because of you know the pandemic um and risk of infection um Masks don't bother me. I, mean, I guess it's another layer of a photo, right? A good photo should be layered anyway, uh, at least in my mind. And so it's it's kind of another layer. Layer, you know, sign of the times is what they say. Um, yeah. But it's not. It's not. Yeah. It's, but it's not. There's just not people downtown still. Yeah. Not enough for it to be. You know. I, it's already, it was wouldn't. already before the pandemic, it was already pretty challenging to like find people who are like, yeah, like finding those moments where people are interacting or doing things that are, I think, interesting. Um, it yeah. was already pretty challenging. So, yeah, I will say that the same people that I have a hundred photos of are the same people who are still downtown now. So it's kind of, you know, yeah. how, 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 how can you play this now? How can, how can you, you know, twist this photo around? So it's not the same photo I took last year, this time yeah. or two years ago, this time. Yeah. Well, uh, Scotty, I know Andrew is dead, is uh, shoots both digital and film, but he's very dedicated to keeping, you know, working with film alive. Are you like that too? Or do you, or do yeah. you? Yeah. Stay broke, shoot film. Uh, I shoot, I shoot quite a bit of film still. Uh, um, Scotty taught me everything I know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Actually, I just, I just took up a more expensive type of film photography, which is large format. So, 
uh, stay real broke and, and shoot film. Um, I, I'm a hybrid though. If, I, if I'm on like on assignment, I shoot digital just because the turnarounds are usually 24 or 48 hours. And it's not viable to shoot film at that point. Uh, but for a lot of my personal work and projects, are all they're all it's it's all film. All the images in here were done with film. Uh, a lot. I say about half and half. There's a, there's a good portion that that are film. I've had this conversation with Andrew a little bit, but uh, uh, not on the radio, so we can do that. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I I have seen a sort of a push pull uh, in in the attitude towards wet chemistry as 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 we debate things like you know, building out a space in our building, uh, for a digital lab, which is just basically a room with tables and computers, or should we do something like invest in a wet chemistry dark room for high school students? And, you know, I, I've, heard from, I've heard from academics that say, well, nobody teaches that anymore. Like, that's just a dead thing. Like, you know, no schools or universities. But I also have found out that that's not true, that there are um, that th it hasn't been wiped out. And it almost strikes me as like vinyl records, right? It's like, there's, mm -hmm. maybe there's gonna be this kind of swing back. Do you, do you, what are your thoughts? Do you think that's true? Yeah, 100%. I think there's a whole resurgence of film. That's why we're seeing Kodak making profits. They're raising their film prices not to stay alive, but because the prices of their products are going up, the prices of the, the costs are going up. Um, that mean dark rooms are getting, are getting popular again. Ilford's still releasing new, they just released a, a, like a portable dark room kit. Like there wouldn't be these new products and these new innovations and these new film stocks and these new camera companies coming out if, if, if there wasn't, you know, a market for film still. I mean, a, a lot of the, a lot of big directors are still using film. Oh, I mean so, like I mean, it's, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, <laughs> Christopher Nolan, there, there, there's, I think Tarantino still shoots film. Yeah. Uh, what's that one new movie? Uh, is it Ruin or Rune or something? Dune. 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 They, yeah. So they shot that digitally, but to get it on, to get that film grain, they shot it digitally, transferred it to film, and then rescanned it back into digital. And that was just to get that 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 film look that you can't get in color grain or that's very hard to get. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I think having a, a, a wet room is 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 plenty viable for the future. Um, I mean, there's people still offering dark room classes. Uh, I have a dark room in my basement. I don't use it nearly as much as I, I should, but um, yeah, it's it's still definitely there. I think I think I think hybrid is the way to go, uh, and I think I think there's a new push with you know everything is so instant and you know digital is great, but I think like are the younger millennials and what's below Gen Z or something, Gen X. I don't know what it is. Um, they want that tactile. They want to work with what they're making and what they're producing they don't want to just see it on the screen uh i mean we're seeing i've seen a lot of that with with younger photographers especially in louisville well i think back to you know when i was in school and i was doing i was in the dark room you know which was in the early 80s you know and there was something magical about you know you you you'd shoot you'd have a negative you could see it and you could make a contact sheet but there was something about the first print coming up in the chemistry like you didn't really see it, it, it and it's magical, you know, the way oh, it's, yeah. up, it's you're in the red light yeah. and it comes up and you see it for the first time and you, and you go, wow, or you go, <clears throat> oh man, that looks terrible, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, that I think, but it strikes me. So Andrew, let me ask you, is it, is it artists that are driving this sort of push back into hmm. chemistry or? I don't know. I don't know if I'd say artists. Um... Because it strikes me when you guys talk about doing like assignments that just for mm -hmm. expediency, the digital is kind of the way you're, you're going to go and transfer images ease more easily and all that kind of stuff. Well, right? I think I mean I think it depends. Scott Scotty definitely works for some outlets that are a little quicker than some of the stuff that I do. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Where it's like, it's I mean, it just depends. It really just depends. Like a lot of some outlets, like I and this is not my photography like this was uh, i assisted a photographer her name is kennedy carter she's lives in durham um she's photographed like beyonce and all these big people she came down here to do some photography um and for for a, a publication and she sent out um email and was like i want to shoot film and so we got her film and we got her like set up with the film lab here in louisville because it was kind of a quick turnaround and they did it all and, and scanned it and did it in 48 hours and the story was up online the next day and it was like ready to go so 
I think it just really just depends. I think there is, it's not necessarily the film per se aspect of it that I think people appreciate and love. Like for me personally, like the reason I shoot and like to shoot portraits on film is because I think the lens on the camera that I use is the best portrait lens ever. Like, so it, it, it doesn't matter if it's digital. If I could get that lens on a digital camera, I would probably shoot it digital. I just, that's just not how it works. So um, for me, it's just kind of one of those things that um, the what? look that you can get with a lot of these older char cameras, the character that you get, the um, and then just like the overall feeling of like being able to print something by hand um, is really, is really special. So, um, and adds a little bit of value to, to your work and you can control it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. It's interesting. So you can't, so you can't get the, uh, the equivalent of that lens for your digital camera. Not that I know. I mean, Scotty, unless you know someone you who's can, got a can, 105, 2.4. Can you? Yeah, would it be a deck on it. Would it feel the <laughs> same? Be, it wouldn't feel the same. Contax made like, a medium format digital because camera. Because you'd be on. it'd be it'd be scaling it. You'd have to get a medium format camera when you because it'd be scaling down for like a 35 millimeter sensor. Yeah, oh yeah. You, you, you'd have to pay up for a medium format digital camera. Yeah, I just don't have that. Just, of money. just shoot your six seven. Why, shoot your why six spend seven. thirty thousand dollars <laughs> on that? Yeah, no, it's well, not, and I, yeah. No, not not to get too technical, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get drawn into listening to the technical stuff too. It's fun. And process yeah. is definitely a theme on the show, right? To talk about what process is. But it's just, it is interesting, you know, because I think the assumption, right? Particularly in a, in a layman's understanding would be, well, digital would give you everything you need. Like it's, that's progress. That's the forward mm -hmm. progress. Like, but mm -hmm. here's an instance where you can't replicate that, at least not to your satisfaction. Yeah. With a digital camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of the, yeah. if, if I do, if I do portraits, like you've been on with me on a couple or at least one shoot for U of L, mm -hmm. like when I do those, those portraits for U of L, that's all shot on, on a Pentax 672. It's just, it's the look, it's the fill, the size, of the negative, it's completely different. It, it, I mean, 35 millimeters is definitely a more urgent type of fill of, of even in a digital form, but on medium format, it's just, it feels more thought out and, and, and intentional. Yeah. Plus the colors or the, yeah. or, or the, or the shades of gray. Yeah. <laughs> is it the equivalent of people talking about uh having uh really good quality vinyl and they talk, they talk about sort of the the medium range in, the, in which they feel gets lost in a lot of the digital digital recording yeah i think you can yeah i think you can completely especially like in like i mean the whole analog you know audio world from mm -hmm. what little i know is is pretty is pretty hop into as far as keeping it alive and people's you know wanting to get those old tube amplifiers and speakers you know uh it's i think it's a similar type of of, of, of argument a grandparent can have it wrong <laughs> yeah. i know i know i know um so how did you guys first meet where where does this uh uh where does this friendship and collaboration start uh, you were doing an interview with State Film Lab, right? For Louisville yeah. Magazine. Yeah, no, that, no, was that was a that was a personal project. Yeah, I was. Oh, okay. I was running like this personal, like that was kind of like part of my like photography journey. I was doing stories about people doing creative things in the city. Um, I was doing a bunch of stories, and yeah, I interviewed State and Scotty walked in, and I don't know. That was it. I, I feel like yeah, we we then we met up later <laughs> again at Sunnergoss um, once to. I was kind of trying to like figure out what I was doing and I knew that Scotty was shooting weddings at the time and I was like can you tell me about wedding photography because I feel like I can never get a straight answer from anyone um, on wedding photography and I, and I remember we met up and we just kind of talked I was probably honest like, about it you were yeah and I yeah. Like, really appreciated it um, yeah. and so I was like yeah I definitely don't want to do weddings but I don't really know what I want to do so back to the drawing board a little bit and um eventually got there so um but yeah I think that's kind of where it started and then it's kind of grown from there yeah yeah we talk, when you talk almost every day now yeah yeah you um I, I I'm your son's uncle so yes yes he is uncle Scotty for sure ah. um so yeah we we I mean we do we've done I mean before the pandemic we were doing road trips um 
even one during one the pandemic. During yeah. yeah, one or two even. Um, just like making photos around Kentucky, doing that whole thing. So we've, we've just, gone out I don't shoot know. together. Yeah, yeah. And just mm-hmm. and then yeah, we used to meet up downtown, like Scotty was talking about on lunch breaks and and take photos downtown during the lunch hour. So um, do you do you compare your work when you've been shooting in the same circumstance? Do you do do you do you look at things together and critique or or learn from each other? Yeah, we definitely share our work with each other. Yeah, I, I'm like, when, especially when, when I get a good image, I'm pretty enthusiastic about it. So I'm like, oh my god, look at this! Like, look at this photo. Um, yeah, we definitely we definitely share. And he, I mean, Andy helped edit my book, especially edit it down because I'm very indecisive. Um, to go from you know three thousand images that I took in six months of them to to the seventy or so that's in the book now. Yeah, we definitely have very like different personalities which i think helps we have the same a lot of the same interests but very different personalities uh which i yeah, think is yeah. is helped us out a lot so um yeah like scotty will like share something with me like the same even if he's shooting film like he'll develop it like same day and share it with me and then like i don't i won't share anything for like a month and be like oh here look at this <laughs> thing that i did because <laughs> i'm just like i'm just slower like i just feel like i'm just like moving at a slower pace so um yeah it's just like it's it's fun though. I think like, I love that. I, I I really enjoy like Scotty's energy and yeah, it it gives yeah. me gives me energy and um yeah yeah we do other fun like we host like a, a photo book night as well. Um but yeah, we're still doing that. yeah we did one. When was that, Scotty? Was it like, lo- late ago? August? I think it was late August. I can't. It was remember. the end of late August. But yeah, yeah, we do them every other month or so. Yeah. But basically, we just meet up at a brewery and hang out, and people bring photo books, and we share them, and drink beer, and talk, and build yeah, community. So build yeah. community. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, we're planning another one in October. We have a yeah, date yet. Uh, I think it's um, uh, we haven't nailed it down yet, but I think it's October. Hold on, pull my calendar up. Twentieth. It's a 20th. Wednesday. Yeah. Well, what kind of uh, What's the size of the community that, that is building up around this? Like how many people are coming to these kind of meetings? Um, the last one we had before the pandemic, there's probably almost 20 people. Um, it hasn't been as strong since, but I, I don't think we, we expected that. But this last one, there people, was... Yeah, the last one we had like nine, I think, total like came through. Or 10, maybe even more. I don't know. I think, I think it was 10 to 12. Yeah, came through. Yeah. And it was, I think, everyone's first time. Yeah, other than us and then Sarah. Other than you and I. Yeah. Is it is Sarah it, wasn't there? No, yeah, Sarah wasn't there. Yeah. Are, are, is that attracting people that are like your generation and, and doing work like you? Or is there is there a lot of diversity in age and, and experience? What what's yeah. the crowd like? Diversity in general, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, it's diversity in age, um gender, race, like it's it's kind of like a little bit of everything. Um so um it's it's I don't know yeah it's it's really fun it's it's cool to see like I have a friend he has a studio down on on Bardstown Road or back is Baxter near Baxter Jacks um and he's like an older guy who's been doing photography for a very long time and just does product photography but is like entrenched in the photo world and has been forever and um he'll come out or there's a gentleman who used to live here his name uh he lives in New York now um and he used to have a studio in Dumbo and just happened to marry a girl, a woman from Louisville. And so he moved here and was shooting for Amazon here and then would travel back to New York every once in a while. And he used to come and hang out and chat with everybody. And yeah, it just kind of like, it depends. Like the crowds differ. And um, I'm trying to think about what the last one it was. I feel like it was a little bit younger, maybe um, the last time we had it. But I mean, it's yeah, it's this in last general, one was... just kind of open to people. But that's, I, I love that though, because it's people yeah. who normally wouldn't come or didn't come previously or, you know, who have either shot film this whole time or doesn't have to be film photographers, but just, you know, no, photographers yeah, in just general. whoever, yeah. Yeah, showed up and uh, that uh, Ryan brought his own like little zines, zines which yeah. were great. Yeah. Like it's just, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good way to discover, you know, people's personal work. And, well, yeah, uh, that's the thing is like, know. I always see like something or a book, like I feel like I like photography and I definitely, but I'm definitely in like this, like, like small world of photography that's very centered around like the photo book 
world of like making photos that way and doing things a certain way and so like having other people come to a photo book night and bring photo books that I've photographers I've never heard of but they're like these pretty prolific photographers that I just don't know um is really uh, pretty cool so I, I always really enjoy it because I always find something new or learn about someone new or, or have discussions with someone about someone that they hadn't seen before of a book that I brought it's just it's fun to spend time uh chatting and well I, the, one of the reasons why I'm so curious about finding out you know some more details about the the way this little group is formed you know Louisville was thought of as being like a great photography town because of the Center for Photographic Studies, which has been closed for quite a while. But that's, it seems like that is a part of what sort of prompts the Louisville Photo Biennial to happen. And I'm just, I'm just kind of curious, like, is Louisville a good town for photographers as we look to, you know, newer generations like you guys are, you know, you guys are pretty young, you're not kids, but you know, you're, you're a lot younger than me. So is, is Louisville a good town for photographers of, of, of your generation? I think so. I think it's, it's a good breeding ground for it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, there's a good balance of, you know, um, culture and diversity here that in other, I think in other, maybe in other bigger cities is, is, can be overwhelming for some people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I, we're the compassion city, which I know is like an arguable term at this point. Um, mm -hmm. But like, um, like I, I think a lot of that plays out in people uh, that you interact with or that you, you know, get to meet and know, um, and you get to photograph. Like I, I've met some really great people through assignments or through portraiture. Um, and I, I mean, that, that's, that's not available just for me because I have assignments, but it's, it's every, you know, they're, they're out there. People are out there. I think it's great. I, I, I love it here. I mean, I would love to photograph in a bigger city, but I think Louisville's a great place to start. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get eaten alive here, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's good. I, I don't know. I It's one of those things where it's like you, because of the internet, like you can kind of work anywhere now. Right. Um, in a way. So um, affordable studio space is, is relatively right. easy to come by in Louisville. Like there's lots of opportunity in terms of like, you're not going to break your bank, like bank account trying to, to live here and, and to get stuff done here. So uh, I think there's definitely benefits for sure. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's easy to make your own way, I think, in Louisville than it would be in, in another larger city. Um, you're close to places like Nashville and Chicago. And um, like I said, like the internet, like I work for larger publications and things like that. And right. You had, I, like, I live here in, you had Kentucky, pictures like, in the New York Times uh, yeah. what, a couple months ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it just, it just, it just depends upon, I think, what what you want to do, the type of work you want to do. Um, I think the, the critical thought around photography, I think in the city is something that could continue to grow and something that I'm, I care about and, and want to see grow. That's why I like the photo book nights is because it's fun to look at like mm -hmm. the masters of photography and see their work and discuss it and talk about it together and think about how you can push your work and get influenced and get shaped by some photographers that are making the best work in the world. So, um, yeah. Well, let me just ask you, uh, in our, in our, maybe it's kind of a closing, uh, thought here, uh, about the little photo biennial itself. And like, as a photographer, obviously you're both showing in connection with it. So there's that sort of opportunity, but, um, what, what do you look forward to about the biennial? What, what does it do for you as a photographer working besides the exhibition opportunity? What, what else do you think it provides for photographers in the city? I mean, it's, 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 a, I mean, it's not just Louisville, obviously. I think there's, there's galleries kind of all over, but it gives people a way you're you know, interested in or maybe not artists or even photographers to see you know, what's being made locally. Oh, some people are traveling here for it as well, like the, the, the feature showings, but... Um, it's, it's just a great way to discover, you know, like what's, what's in the city. Like, you know, what, what are people making, you know, people that you, you might not hear about because they're not on the news or they're not, you know, in these publications, but they have a, a incredible body of work and, you know, here it is. And we can go look at it, see it and meet that, meet the artists themselves usually. Is it hard to, is it hard to get an exhibit and does this provide more, like more opportunities? I said, besides the exhibit opportunity, when I asked the question, I know, but is that one of the things is that if every gallery in, 
Louisville, Southern Indiana, Frankfurt, and Lexington, which is kind of where, what the range of this thing is now, uh, is, uh, I don't know if it's every gallery in Frankfurt and Lexington, but there are galleries in those cities that are participating. Um, with that many venues trying to find opportunities to show, and I see lots of places that aren't normal galleries, that aren't, you don't see them on the schedules doing shows, but I think that are showing to, to, to get tied into the biennial. Uh, so are there people that are only getting an opportunity to show, little photographers who are only getting the opportunity to show because of the biennial? I don't think so. What do you think, Andy? I, I think so. I, th I think it gives opportunity to local photographers to share their work. Like, absolutely. I, I don't know how much of an opportunity there is to just show your work outside of the photo biennial. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely um, not. Yeah, I mean, there, there used to be the, the gallery hops or the, the trolley hops, which was like yeah. once a month. Yeah, uh, and, and like I've done shows like for outside of the the photo biennial, but that was like through a friend who I knew was running a gallery and asked me to do it. And it's mm -hmm. just like, there's nobody really like beating down, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, I, that's the way I feel. It's like, I think it, it does, it gives a tremendous opportunity to local photographers. And it's not just all local. Like I know a lot of times like bigger photographers come in and, and do shows yeah. as well, so yeah. Well, and you know, Paul Paletti is showing Keith Carter, who's doing yep. the, the, the keynote address. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you, let me let me take it the, another step further. Then, I mean, you know, what I hear all the time from all artists is that there's just not enough galleries. You know, everybody wishes there was a little bit more mm -hmm. um, exhibition space opportunity um, mm -hmm. that painters, excuse me, painters and printmakers and sculptors aren't finding the same opportunity to to uh, exhibit. Do you feel like uh, do you feel like a lot of galleries in town are, are they always as open to photography? Is photography um, does it have the same sort of um, priority in their minds as other artistic mediums? Yeah, is that not the the age old quite like it's like yeah how serious is photography taken as like a, a gallery art form? Um, yeah. I think I don't I mean, know. I, think, I, do think... I don't know. I don't know if I know enough to be honest with you. I, yeah, personally, like. I found the art community here in Louisville, at least the the section of it that I've been a part of to be very accepting and open to different forms and things like that. And even seeing the the photograph section of like the Breonna Taylor show at the Speed was really cool. And the Speed's been doing more photo things. I know they just bought a bunch of Bruce Davidson stuff and um, they have the Meat Yard stuff up now with the Wendell Berry um, exhibit. So I don't know, it's, it's, it's interesting to see an expansion of photography that way and scotty what do you think uh I, I mean for photographer i don't think it's it's too hard to get a gallery i mean it, they're probably it would obviously if there were more galleries i think it would be filled up with you know photos especially in the biennial um but compared to like the other art the, the, uh, that was more of your question right is 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 our sculptors or painters will they have the same opportunity as photographers um, I mean, I, I don't think I know enough to answer that. I, th I think photography is, is an easy thing to show. Uh, there's less risk with, you know, something going missing because I'm, I'm not saying the photography is easy at all, but it, it is a print that we have a digital copy of that, you know, um, rather than a painting that's usually a one of a kind, it's not a print of a painting or a, 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 you know, a sculpture if it falls in break. So I don't know, I think there's less risk involved both, you know, uh, physically and uh, visually um, with photography. Well, I didn't mean to put you guys on the spot. It was, just, it was a thought that occurred to me, but I'm also th realizing you guys both do different kinds of photography um, and you, you, you work professionally in different sorts of aspects, different regards aside from uh, gallery, yeah. gallery exhibits. But so I was just sort of wondering, but, so maybe that's not even as big a priority to you because of the nature of the work you, you yeah. both do. I think it's also new to at least I mean to me and Scotty is this your first not your first show but like no, this first is my first show? first show I think really okay it's yeah. a first full show I've had I've had yeah. photos of before but I've never yeah. had a full show before yeah like a solo and it was it was it was me asking you know 15 12 like hey I know you have the space yeah you know, would you be interested in this with the biennial because they weren't even involved with the biennial I think at that point mm -hmm. yeah so that was so that was their introduction to be to open it up and now that they have they have my show then they have one in october yeah right and they're they're you know they're relatively new exhibition space i mean they've uh, mm -hmm. 
I don't even know what they've been showing for a full year, you know. Um, no. They, they just bought and were renovating that building in the, during the pandemic, I think. So, yeah. Um, yep. You know, they're one of the newer sites in town. So, all right. Well, listen, you guys, I think, uh, I think, I think we've about exhausted our, our moment here. Um, <laughs> so I thank you so much for talking to me. Let me say it again. Uh, uh, Scotty Perry's show here is at 1512 uh, Creative Campus. Uh, it's, it's 1512 Portland Avenue, but you actually come into it from Lytle Street right across from our building. His work is up over there through September 28th. Uh, his website is scottyperry.co, just C-O, is that correct? Is oh, that right? you can do com too. It, it picks both of them up. Yeah, it was. A, I've looked at that. It, it, looks like a, it looks like a typo. <laughs> <laughs> but type in Scotty with a Y, Perry. I think you'll find him. Uh, and Andrew Sensi's show will be here at the Louisville Visual Art uh, from September 30th through November 7th. And he has an artist talk scheduled on October 9th. Uh, go to our website, look at our social media. We'll be letting you all know. Uh, I think we're going to have a little party here with 1512 on October 7th, too. I'll just drop that in your look, look for that on your social media, too. Uh, Scotty Perry's work will be down, but I bet he comes to the party. I'll be there. <laughs> I hope he comes to the party. So thank you guys so much and uh, good luck with everything during the rest of the biennial. Yeah, thank you so Appreciate much. It. Thank you. Thanks.